Hey guys, in this video, let's discuss how we can handle exception or failures in our logic app. So basically, we will discuss something called scope. In simple words, consider scope as our try catch block. Now let's try to understand our requirement with this example. So let's say we have a salesman who posts below data every day. So basically, he enters the details of items which he sold on that particular day. Right? And the details are item type, quantity sold and price. So let's say when he is entering this data in his system, we give a call to this post rest API and to this rest API, we provide these details as JSON in the request body. Now we want to read these details that is the JSON detail again the details like item type, quantity and price. We want to read these details in logic app and finally we want to save these details in SQL. The flow of our application is something like this. So first salesman enters the data from UI. So we call REST API and we pass that JSON as a payload in the request body. Then at logic app site we will have this HTTP request receive trigger. And finally we will read this JSON payload in our logic app and then we will save that data in our SQL server. Okay, so that was the standard flow. But let's say what if that salesman enters incorrect data. For example, he for example he provides quantity equal to ABC. So ideally it should be numeric, right? And so let's use scope to handle this failure. So guys, in simple words, consider scope as a container for logical grouping of our actions. So we can create two scopes. The first scope for try block. Here we group actions from our typical workflow. So for example, we can read the JSON contents from our API and then we can add these contents in our SQL. So this action, it will be part of our try block that is try scope. And then we will have a scope for catch block. So let's say something goes wrong in that try scope. We can simply add our exception handling code in this catch scope. So I know guys, you might not be getting at this point. So let's see it in action. So guys, this is our rest API that is post API from where we try to add that sales record. And you see here we specify item type quantity and price in the request body. Right, and then we have this ASP.NET Core Web API that is sales slash add sales record, and again you can see it is post API. So we simply receive the contents over here, and then we simply trigger that HTTP URL so that our logic app should get executed. Right, and now let's go to our logic app. So guys, this is our logic app and if you see the trigger is when HTTP request is received. So basically, when we execute this code that is HTTP client dot post async. So basically we are triggering that HTTP request. And in this action that is insert row, you see we are simply reading those JSON contents that is item type, quantity and price and then we are inserting it in SQL server. Great. Now let's do one thing, let's try to provide invalid quantity that is let's say I will say quantity is equal to ABC and again see this is our SQL server table that is TBL sales data and you see the quantity type is integer right. So let's call so here I will say send and you can see our debugger has been hit and here now I will say continue. Now let's go to our logic app and let's go to this run history and see guys our logic app has failed. So let's click on it and you see it says bad request and we can see the correct error details that is conversion failed right now. Let's go to logic app designer. 
so now what we will do is this action that is insert row we will add it in a scope that is it will be our try block and guys remember in in a scope we can have multiple actions as well so again it is a logical grouping of action so here i will say add an action and i will say scope let's let's go first let's give name as our try block and guys now we have to move this action that is inserting data in sql server in this try scope right so we can simply drag and drop and obviously now let's say our try block if it fails so we have to have catch block as well right so again i'll say add action again we have to say scope scope and now it will be our catch block so guys ideally if everything goes well our execution should stop in this action that is insert row and it should not reach this catch block right so this catch block it should be executed only if error occurred in this try block right so let's click on this action that is catch block and under settings can you see this run after let's expand this try so we have to execute this catch block only after if this try block if it fails or it has timed out if it is successful we don't want to run that catch block so let's unselect this and let's collapse now guys let's say exception has occurred and now we are in this catch block so what we want to do so what we want to do so let's do one simple thing let's say if there is an error let's add that information in this tbl errors table so let's keep it simple okay so here i will initialize one variable so let's say add an action and i'll say variables initialize variable and it will be error details Give okay, a type string. As of now, let's keep it empty. And now let's go to this catch block. Add an action. So again, action will be SQL because now we want to add error details in our error table. So here, see more. I'll say insert row. Again, let's put these details. And this now table will be TBL errors. And you see we have one column that is error text. So here I'll click on this and we need to provide the value from this variable that is error details. But again, as of now, this error details will be blank because we have just initialized, right? So we can set the value as well. So let's call as this. And here I will say add action. I will say variables, and I will say set variable. So let's select this error details, and I will say error has occurred while adding sales record in SQL DB. So let's collapse, and let's say save. Great. Now let's try to call our post API again and again we are providing invalid details that is quantity is equal to ABC. It should be numeric. Here I will say say and again our debugger has been hit and here I will say continue and now our logic app must have been executed. So let's so let's click on this run history. And you see now it shows successful. Let's actually open it. And you see 
error occurred while adding sales record in SQL Server. But then because we had this catch block, we have caught that error and, and we have inserted it in error table, right? So let's actually cross check in SQL Server. And here I will say select star from table errors. And yes, error has been locked. So again guys, this was really a simple straightforward example of using try catch block. But in real time, there will be a complex workflow where we will use this try catch block. But I really wanted to keep it simple and I just wanted you to understand the concept. So that's it guys. Thanks. Thanks for listening.